Hi guys, it is May 11, 2018. Yellow fever threatens South Florida. Wow, yellow fever. Well, we have not seen yellow fever in this country in a hundred years, and now we may be having an outbreak of yellow fever in South Florida. If you have done just even a little bit of research on the United States government slash military, their research and their experiments with biowarfare, you will look at these headlines with a very different thought process that goes through your head. Oh, what is the United States government about to unleash upon the American people? There has not been a yellow fever outbreak in the United States in 100 years, but state health officials in Florida are concerned that a large outbreak in Brazil, again, the outbreak of Zika in Brazil, and if you don't know anything about that Zika outbreak and you believe that it was caused by mosquitoes, I will link below to everything, but click on this video, the truth behind the Zika virus, and you will find that what we were told by the United States government, by our health officials, by the CDC, was a complete lie. Enough about Zika. Yellow fever. The disease is deadlier than the Zika virus. And many people won't even know that they have it because they'll be asymptomatic. Those who do come down with fever chills, headaches, well, that mimics an awful lot of illnesses. So they won't say, wow, I have yellow fever because we don't have yellow fever here. But 15% of those infected the initial symptoms pass and then come back with a vengeance within a day, causing internal bleeding and jaundice, the yellowing of the skin that gives the fever its name, the failure of the liver, other organs, and half of them will die within a week or two. The CDC has warned travelers, they warned in March, not to go to yellow fever hotspots in Brazil unless they were vaccinated South Florida officials have already dumped more toxic chemicals on you guys in South Florida as they do an awful lot. Yes, it's the mosquito control. So, Broward County, Miami-Dade County, you already got sprayed with very dangerous chemicals. Pandemic. Okay. Bill Gates came out with his an annual announcement, a pandemic is coming and it's going to kill 33 million people. I have posted videos on Bill Gates saying 33 million are going to die from a pandemic. He seems to come out annually and make this, he makes the same exact announcement. The United States is not ready. We've got to get ready. we got to get a vaccine. we got, okay. All you have to do is a little bit of research on Bill Gates to find out that he is not what an awful lot of people claim he is. He is not a phil philanthropist. This guy is a murderous, psychopathic, nut job, eugenicist. He's not out there saving people. He's out there killing people in other countries with dangerous vaccines. Many are children who either get a vaccine for polio and then end up, well, how many did he paralyze and or kill? Over 40,000 children in India. Other countries, experimental vaccines where the children were coming down with serious illnesses, some died, but you can't get through to Americans about anything. They just love, I don't know, the bullshit. Bill Gates spoke to Trump and he said that there is an increasing risk of a bioterrorism tax to attack and stressed the importance of US funding for advanced research on new therapeutics including a universal flu vaccine which would protect against all or most strains of influenza 
And if anybody did research on how they come up with these vaccines for a flu of a strain they don't even know, they don't know what the strain will be. They start making the vaccine seven months before the flu season. They have no idea what the strain is. People line up to get the flu shot, and they're getting a flu shot that has been already determined that it is not effective every year. Every year, the flu vaccine, ineffective for the strain that has developed. So they're now going to be creating a universal flu vaccine. Will it be made mandatory? Perhaps. Trump encouraged Gates to follow up with top officials at the Health and Human Service Department, the National Institutes of Health, Food and Drug Administration, as well as the National Security Advisor, John Bolton. Now, I don't know if it was Trump who suggested Gates speak to John Bolton, because this is a national security. It's a national security priority pandemic unleashing uh, this bioterrorism attack upon Americans. And they won't realize that it will be our U.S. military that unleashes that attack. John Bolton. Look, Trump, he chose Mr. Neocon, Mr. Warmonger, the guy who worked with Bush and Cheney, John Bolton, Bill Gates. I think all of the ingredients for a pandemic are actually available this year. Considering that Americans. Now, why did he, why, first of all, why did Bill Gates come out with this announcement year after year? And I do believe, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been three years Bill Gates coming out with the exact same announcement, with the exact same 33 number. And I'm wondering if it was because they were perhaps getting ready to unleash a, you know, some kind of disease and decided not to. Perhaps they were waiting for more and more Americans to have these weakened immune systems. They do have the data. They collect it from hospitals, from, their, from doctors' offices from clinics, and the more they waited, the more Americans were getting sick and having their immune systems destroyed by, by the toxic air they're breathing, the poisonous water that they're drinking, the foods that do not sustain their health. I have said in a couple of videos that I think this summer is going to be particularly hard. I think this summer is going to be rather outstanding. I think we will see heat waves breaking records. Now we have seen these heat waves and they break records every year. But I think this, this summer is going to be really, really bad. Already in South Carolina. It's hard to breathe. The air is dead. The sun is white. We don't have an ozone layer protecting us like it used to. And that ozone, no, don't let some, I don't know, health official, government official, or some uh, global warming activist tell you you shouldn't be using your air conditioning. It's destroying the ozone layer. You need to come back and say, 
uh, our military flying their supersonic jets in our ozone layer regularly has stripped the ozone layer, the geoengineering strips the ozone, our military, these ionospheric heaters like HARP, shooting energy up into the ozone, oh, passing, uh, or into the ionosphere, passing the ozone. That is why the ozone layer has been so destroyed. But now we're living with no protection, and these ultraviolet rays coming from the sun are deadly. They have lowered the oxygen in our atmosphere, in our air. Our air is ionized. The metals that we have breathed inside us but the metals in the atmosphere, the ionization of the atmosphere with a very thin layer of the ozone now with these deadly ultraviolet rays coming right down to the surface of the earth, burning all life. They've changed the atmosphere. The negative ions are depleted and they are essential for our overall well-being. Yes, I think this summer the damage that they have already done to the natural processes, the toll, we're going to see it right in our face. And considering the damage that they have done to the natural processes, I could very well see because more and more people are waking up that they unleashing this pandemic this year get it done because more people are beginning to see what is happening now I'm not saying I'm right I'm just saying that that's what I've been thinking when you know that they have already been digging up the Spanish flu victims. That's right. I read this article a few weeks before Bill Gates comes out with his annual announcement. Pandemic, 33 million die. Scientists have risked a repeat outbreak by resurrecting long dormant influenza specimens that were in turn 90 years ago with their victims, exhuming the victims of the 1918 Spanish flu to see how the Spanish flu may be related to the H5N1. The possibility that the Spanish flu may be an ancient predecessor to the modern avian flu because in 1918 the people who died died from overly aggressive immune responses that attacked their own bodies and they're seeing that with the H5N1 flu they're seeing the same phenomenon with those patients wow they already have here uh, a, a scapegoat for a pandemic, the unleashing of H5M1, that it so closely resembles the Spanish flu. They could even say that these scientists who were exhuming, exhuming the bodies of those who died from the Spanish flu, well, huh. An American biologist said it's one of the most dangerous things people have ever done. A professor said or called it an Armageddon scenario. The possibility that during the act of exhuming a body, the 1918 virus could 
genetically recombine with the current strain and awaken another major ep epidemic, and boom, they've got scapegoats. Look, there are so many different scenarios that they can pull off, especially with our fabulous American public that really have stopped thinking. They've just given it up. Conspiracy theory U.S. Army has admitted to conducting hundreds of germ warfare tests on Americans. U.S. is responsible for carrying out a number of chemical attacks on thousands of unsuspecting Americans, and some of the innocent victims are still suffering from the effects today. In 1997, uh, the U.S. Army admitted that it secretly conducted at least 239 germ warfare tests in the open air in cities across the country between 1949 and 1969, areas where the lethal germs were released into the public, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, New York City, Key West, Panama City, the Army insisted that the purpose of the test was to study how biological warfare affects the public. So unleash, unleash germ warfare upon the American public without their consent and knowledge. That's our army. That's our military. The Washington Post published this report. It was the release of the Army's censored report. It was the most complete official version of this nation's biological warfare effort and revealed that in addition to public areas, military personnel and their families were also targeted. The Army listed 27 times that it tested simulated toxins on public property, including releasing spores in two tunnels on the stretch of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The Army Secretary used military personnel and their families for open-air experiments by spraying simulated germs into the air at a number of bases, including Fort Detrick, uh, other forts, the Marine Training School at um, Guan. Wow. Sorry, Quantico. I I don't know what is going on with my brain, but sometimes I just look at something and I can't even figure out how to pronounce it. And it's something that you've heard over and over again. Anyway, another 504 workers connected with biological warfare activities at Fort Detrick, Dugway Proving Ground, and the uh, Desert Test Center in Utah and the Pine Bluff Arsenal in Arkansas suffered infections. The initial tests were carried out in 1942 and they were drastically increased in 1961. The Army maintained that the live bacteria deployed in tests across the country were deemed harmless at the time. The test resulted in lifelong illnesses and health problems for many of the innocent victims who were unaware of their quality of life, it being compromised by their own government. Many of us would be very healthy today if we did not have our government. I am going to leave you with an excerpt from this video, Lyme Disease Exposed. This is a great talk and I will link below to this video. I hope that all of you click on the link below and listen to this man talk to you about the research, the documents received via Freedom of Information Act requests. And he speaks of other diseases, but this video is primarily 
about Lyme disease and how that was unleashed on the American public. We're living a very dangerous time. So I do hope that you listen to the excerpt that you're just about to hear, and I do hope that you circulate this information. The best defense, the strongest defense that we all have against any of these diseases is a strong immune system. Unfortunately, we're losing rapidly all of what we need to keep our immune system strong. But do your best because I do think that an awful lot of people are going to be dying from diseases that will be deliberately unleashed upon all of us, unleashed by our own U.S. military. <laughs>